So uh, last time I said we'd look at the lower registry, but uh, I'm probably not going to do that now because we've got enough information about Lua and about binding C++ to Lua to do everything we need to do now. So uh, we will need the registry eventually probably, but there's no driving reason to, to learn it right now as we don't we don't need to know that. Um, and instead I decide this, this time, I'm not going to do any code, but just going to um, talk about runtime type information or reflection or introspection, which is sometimes called. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, we now have a reason or a driving desire um, to get runtime type information into our program to bind our Lua stuff. Um, now, if you don't know what runtime type information is, it's basically the ability for at runtime to ask the computer about information about type. So uh, given any type, let's say given any type, it could be whatever, like our sprite class, for instance, like, like the one we've been uh, we've been using where is it? I've got it here. So like this is this is our type. We've got our sprite type and Given any type uh, that we've got here. We have some things that we would want to know about it at runtime uh, For instance, like how many how many public members does it has in this case? It has two. What are the names of their public members? What is the name of this class? How many constructors does it have? Uh, what are the parameters to the constructors? How many methods does it have? What are the parameters to those? What are the types of, of those parameters? And can we call any of those parameters? Uh, and this is all, basically what we need to be able to do is take take the, like a string that represents this type, like the string sprite. Um, so if I say, so like given any type sprite, we want to know, um, uh, let's see, like uh, how many properties, I'm going to call them properties, does this type have? So that's like public members. Uh, how many, how many methods, methods does this type have? Um, like uh, what are the names of those methods? Uh, what are the function, what are the signatures of those methods? So we need to know this information and you think, well, what's, where's the driving desire to, to need to like basically turn this, this string sprite uh, into this information. But if we look at what we've been doing in Lua, um, th this is exactly what we need to know. Cause a Lua script is basically, it starts out as a bunch of text. If I've got it down here. Uh, it starts out as, as basically text. And at some point we have to turn some piece of text into a call to a function in native code. So that's really what, what we want to do. We want to map what is basically a string into a function call. Um, and we've kind of been doing that already, but we've, we've done it in a very manual way. We're like what we've got works. We, we, we took our sprite class and we, we created these Lua kind of binding methods that take the information about sprite and um, and and we um, call functions on it. So we had to write a destroy sprite, we had to write a create sprite, we had to write a move sprite and a draw sprite and a sprite index for accessing the public members. Where well, you can kind of actually see there that we're we're accessing x by name. We're we're looking for a string called x, uh, so we can access the x in this sprite. And same thing for when we're writing values to it, and we're we're doing the same similar sort of code. Uh, and this this actually works really well, but the problem with it is is that every time you create a new type, like we have only got one in this example, every time you create a new type, you're going to have to do all this binding all over again, and it's always going to be different. Every time you add a add a function uh, to this, you're going to have to do it again. Every time you add a public member or, or remove one, you're going to have to go and alter the code. So, although it works, it's incredibly um, like programmer time consuming, if you know what I mean. It's like, and, and it's very prone to error because it's gonna be very similar code each time that you're gonna to have to write. But eventually you will just make a mistake and this will end up becoming massive. And there's there's, there's another way to solve that. Like um, you can create, uh, there are programs out there that create automated bindings, for instance, like Swig, which will auto generate uh, these bindings for you. Um, but you can do it with runtime type information, which is the, the route that I think I'm going to go down just to show how that works. But you could clearly see that if we knew information about our type, then 
we wouldn't need to keep writing this this function again like create sprite for instance if we if instead of create sprite it was just create create like create type and if we somehow knew about the type that we were going to create so remember we last video we did up values we could pass through in an up value some type information to this so what could happen then is uh, we could we could get that type information and with enough information we could just construct one of these without even knowing the type like directly being able to you know include sprite we wouldn't have to include sprite and we'd be able to make one because you can see here all we need to know is the size that's our runtime type information how big is a sprite um, and then later on down the line we have like we call a destructor on it so if we could call a destructor just from the information about oh give me the type sprite and tell me how to call a destructor because I've got a pointer to one, uh, and also I have a pointer to a sprite. Could you tell me how? Could you call me a move function, and I'll tell you what parameters to push on, or, or you know, uh, tell me what order to push these parameters on, and I'll do it. So that's that's the driving desire to get runtime typing in, because it can basically automate all of this for us in a way that we could write one function that could handle like most types. Um, and that that that's going to be a really good thing for us because we can take our like trivial example of sprite and turn it into a proper fully working program and you can see the reason why i've gone through it this way first because you're going to still going to need to know how to do all this like just creating this like very simple binding if you know how to do all this like the runtime typing is one step further over the top um to create this in a more generic way if you jump in at the deep end and try and go in with that straight away you won't know what you're doing and it'll be just a, a total mess. But this way we've, we've, we've done the program and now we've worked out that, oh my God, I'm going to have to do this a thousand times more for my thousand classes. So it's definitely something um, that we want to look into. So this is what we need. We need this ability, this runtime type information. We need to be able to ask the program about a type and about you know, giving these types names that are strings, and then t and then asking information about these um, about what properties the uh, the type has, and and also, I mean, this is what is technically, I think, this is called uh, introspection. Introspection. So introspection is the ability to get to ask a type about what it is it can do. We also uh, are going to need reflection. So given that given the type then, so given any type, for instance, sprite, uh, we want to be able to construct one. So we want to be able, just from like taking that string, I like say construct me a sprite. So we need to construct a t uh, construct one of these things. Um, uh, we want to be able to invoke methods. Uh, invoke methods. Uh, given the name of the method, so you can see why we needed to know the name up above. Um, and uh, we also want to be able to read and write properties. And when I say properties, again, these are public members. You could even possibly write the private members if you want to, but public members is what we're interested in. So we want to be able to read and write properties. So, that, so that's what we need. We need introspection and we need reflection. And C++ has something called runtime type information, but it it doesn't really do any of these things. All it can do is you can say, is this a, is this a class a type sprite or something? And that's it. So um, it doesn't really give you much of an advantage. It's pretty rubbish, to be honest. It's really, really basic. Oh, and even then, when it's enabled, if that class doesn't have, um, if it's not a virtual class and it doesn't have a, um, a virtual table it, it still can't even do it so it's it's total rubbish and um, well I don't know if it's rubbish but it's, it's pretty useless to us um, and it might involve you changing how the class works to make it work whereas we want the ability to do this with anyone's class even if we didn't write it we want to be able to create uh, reflection and introspection information about it um, and and do that basically so that's our driving desire to get runtime type information uh, into our program. If we put that in, we can couple that with, the, with the, what we know about binding at the moment and we could create um, a system that would allow us to just bind a type by, once we've created the runtime type information for our, for our sprite, for instance, we'd just be able to say, okay, just bind me that sprite. 
and Lua would be able to do everything that we've already done in this program, but we, we wouldn't have to write tons and tons of code to do it. I mean, we're going to have to write the equivalent of this code, but we're only going to have to write it once, and then hopefully uh, we can just call anything we need. So that's the kind of thing it is. So, so runtime type information is nothing magic. It's just the ability to kind of turn that string into some runtime uh, information and to give it in some sort of like pseudo code way. It would be something like, um, so what we'd want is something like type information in a class. Uh, we'd want the name of that class. Uh, we'd want a list of the methods. Uh, so that'd be like list of method. So we'd want to know the methods that that, that type has. We'd want to know uh, the properties, and they would just be more, well, they'd be another one of these. So the, so when I say properties, it'd be like members, public members. So we'd have a, a list of the members. Uh, we, we'd need to know this the size and bytes of that class, of that type, sorry. It might not be a class. It could just be an, an int or something. Uh, we'd want to know the size and bytes, because as you can see before in Lua, we wanted to be able to construct one of those just from the size and bytes. So if you gave us the name Sprite and told me how big it was, I wouldn't need any more information than that to, to get the user datum in Lua to be created. So that, that, that alone would be a start. And we'd also need uh, possibly things like um, an offset, which is like the number of bytes that this, this type is from the beginning of, of a type or something, if it's like a complex type or something. So in, in that instance, like the uh, X and the Y, uh, in Sprite, they're like this is zero bytes from the start Sprite, and this is like four bytes from the start Sprite. With that information, we've, you know, you've got enough information to be able to access the position of that Y inside Sprite and start messing with it. Um, so yeah, we need like in, in pseudocode terms, we need something like that, and then we'd also have like method, and a method would be uh, like, is it const, you know? So we'd want to know all these kind of things about it. Is it volatile? Uh, I can't spell it. Can't spell volatile. And uh, we want to know its return type, which is just more type information. So, whoops. So what what does this return? Returns. You know what does it return? And a list of its parameters, which is just more type information. So these are the. So this is like the function signature. So this is like signature, isn't it? Oh, I suppose the type, the return type, and these are the kind of the signature. I suppose they're all the signature together. Signature. So given like, this is just a really like trivial pseudocode example, but given information like that, we can create our binding and start automating uh, this this basically this process and then start like thinking oh right now I've got a thousand classes all I have to do is register them and and bingo I'm off I can start scripting with them and it, that the runtime type information can also be used for other things as well because you can bind to script you could use it to serialize information to disk so you could take that see so once you know all the public members of a, of a type it'd be very easy to just serialize them out to a file and serialize them back without having to write loads of code um, and also that then allows you to do things like send that thing over the network in a packet. So the runtime type information can have like having have benefits more than just scripting. Um, so what we really need then is to get runtime type information into this program so we can do that. So there's a few ways of doing it. You could uh, write your own, which is uh, if if you want to learn how to do that. I mean that's that's the way I did it. So you, you can you can write your own, but it is quite time consuming. Um, and you know, it'll take you some time, but there are, there is, as I say, there are other oh, is. Um, I found this, basically found this library online, um, called RTTR written by a guy called Axel Mendes. And it's been recommended by some other people. And I've been looking at this and this looks like quite a decent, uh, reflection library He's calling it runtime type reflection. But, um, essentially it looks like this library would do exactly what I was describing before, and this could be like exactly, exactly what we want. Um, so he just explains there what I've explained, what runtime type information is, and here's how we use it. So he's got a really basic example. You just include the stuff. There's his example data, a bit like our sprite that we're doing, and you have these like registration functions. So you can see here that we are telling 
we're telling the runtime type information, we're kind of associating strings with these types. So we, we've given the my struct string name to my struct, which is a template parameter there. And it's got this um, syntax for registering it, but basically it's saying, okay, register me a constructor, tell me about this data property that you've got here and, and give it a name, as you can see. So we've, we've, we've pushed on names for these like addresses of these things and tell me about this function that you've got here. Uh, and this thing will automatically like work out what all the parameters are and stuff like that. So that's really cool. So that you just do that once for each type that you want to use. Uh, and then down here, you can see that this is the kind of thing we, we need. We need to be able to like find all the properties by name, get all the methods by name, construct one of these by name and get and set properties. And again, if we can get a type by name, we can get a property by name and we can set that property. So, oh, and invoke methods again. So it's a very similar thing, like invoking a method, but invoking it by name of the string. So this looks to be uh, exactly what we're looking for. So I think what we're going to do is, in the next video, I'll just cover um, downloading this and building it and integrating it into the project. Because I have tried this before, and it is, it is a little bit of messing around, but I just want one single video on that to be a reference for this is how I got this library to work in the tutorial for anyone who's following along um, and the other things to know are it, it works on just about everything it's totally portable it's totally free to use even commercial projects it does basically everything we want um, uh, and, it, and it's totally free but um, I think um, this guy accepts donations this Axel Mendez so, um, Menzel it's not Mendez Menzel Axel Menzel he's called um, so if this turns out to be, oh, also actually, uh, it's quite a lot of tutorial, like quite a lot of good documentation on how to use it. So if this turns out to be what we need and we can get this working well in, in the tutorial, then I'll do donate this guy like a hundred euros or something. Cause I I've written my own runtime type information and I know the amount of work that goes into it. So we'll see if we can get it to work and we can get it to do what we want. It looks like it's going to be quite nice. There's an invoking a method, a hello world method. Um, so next video, I'll just cover uh, installing that, like download, install, build from source and get it like um, compiling and linking into here. And then from there on, we're going to look at just creating the automated binding for Lua and we're going to automate all this uh, boilerplate style code that we've written before. So that'll be for the next time.